ready for our next session on frugal innovations frugal innovation for the masses that is the um, topic of the panel discussion i think uh, our panelists are here uh, he is the director of uh, iit palakkad we have one more professor uh, on this panel professor siddharth pandya pa siddharth panda he is the professor he is a professor of chemical engineering um, and also the coordinator of uh, the national center of flexible electronics nc flexi um, from iit kanpur his research focuses on uh, chemical sensors for various applications including healthcare so we are uh, happy to have him is uh, professor siddharth panda here Oh, he's here. Oh. Hello, sir. Okay. Our fourth panelist is uh, Mr. Nitin Gupta. He's the founder of uh, Sickle Innovations. Sickle Innovations is a he's a he's a product designer. He's uh, with a mechanical engineering background, and uh, he's worked at Istro before. Um, and Sickle Innovation is uh, a agriculture uh, startup. So. We, He has an interesting uh, company as well, uh, and our uh, fifth but not uh, last but not the least, our moderator uh, uh, Somil uh, Majumdar, uh, Maj Majmudar, <laughs> sorry, uh, Somil Majmudar, uh, who uh, owns, who is the CEO and MD of uh, Sports Village. Um, it's a startup uh, trying to uh, ensure that. Uh, Hundred million chil children get to play sports. Uh, I think they've uh, reached a, uh, reached a sizable amount of that target. And um, his aim is to uh, get people who can't play sports to play sports and to learn via sports. So welcome, man. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, welcome everybody. My job as a moderator is to make sure that what they know, and there's a very motley but extremely uh, well-informed uh, research panel, connects to what you folks want. Just as a context in uh, introduction, we have somebody who's been in the top two percent of scientists in India at uh, by Stanford for the last four years consecutively. We have somebody who's the chief scientist at the Government of India's Innovation Foundation under the Department of Science and Technology. We have an entrepreneur who has a thriving startup in agriculture, very appropriately called Sickle Innovation. And we have someone who has won the IBM Invention Award and has also rolled up his sleeves on building a smart haptic watch, which is now about to see commercial reality. So it's brilliant. So we have a fantastic uh, variety of uh, people from academia to research to actually uh, scientists who develop products to. Uh, I also want to do a quick audience check. Uh, how many of you are working in innovation, funding innovation? Any show of hands? How many of you are working in not frugal innovation, wasteful innovation? One person at least is there. Everybody else is working. So that's the one point that we're going to talk about: innovation, frugal innovation. What what's the distinction? And that'll be one thing. How many of you are working on innovation for the masses? And uh, how many of you are working for innovation for the elite? Nobody. For this room, innovation for this room. Nobody. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, the way we are structuring this is to have uh, uh, five minutes of opening remarks by each of the panelists, and then some conversation based on what discussion we've had earlier. Last 10 minutes or so, or 15 minutes of Q&A, and uh, Aditi is going to make sure that we protect that 15 minutes of Q&A. To all the panelists, as I reminded you, if my hand goes up, you have 30 seconds to stop. Yes. So, uh, Professor Shekhar, if I may start with you, uh, if you can give us your views, given that you have, of course, as over the last, as a scientist, you you know been a top two percent and have that side of your work, and now you're also director at IIT Palakkad. How do you see frugal innovation for the masses, and what are your thoughts? And some opening remarks from you. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Thanks. Good. Thanks. So, 
from good morning to good afternoon uh, we are still delayed so i think uh, it's a very good initiative by these organizers particularly uh, considering the present situation and also country like ours developing country rural uh, uh, initiative is always needed uh, because it's addressing mass and uh, we need to reach many uh, people don't have proper food shelter and many more i don't have to explain that in fact uh, the first session morning uh, by our keynote speakers and all very clear some of the points they have already uh, given some inputs in this direction so uh, in my opinion it is not new as all of us know what is known as jugan typically uh, some sort of non conventional way of working temporary solutions which are there in our indian system uh, hindi word called jugan is a modification is are typically is uh, i look at is uh, same thing yeah, i teach product design course to final year uh, students and i was in iit madras i have not started teaching in iit palghat because i just taken over last year and only so uh, i had to spend time to teach we are having lot of construction and other things so administrative things i am doing more involved into that but when i used to teach this course product design Uh, all of us know a product design course starts from basically a uh, what is a uh, need analysis to start with any product why should i do that there should be a need analysis then a basic definition why what is to be done and currently what is the situation the customer survey and then big concept development what, what way uh, it should be different from that can be cost effective or it can be uh, more efficient or it is uh, uh, giving a better solution and whatever the idea here is there uh, uh, is innovation automatically comes when we focus for the need so all that starts with uh, uh, my opinion is the need indirectly makes people to come with any innovation program or whatever innovation is innovation it's good innovation in my opinion or uh, that's very good to the society whatever you take uh, that innovation addresses a big number useful for the society is always a good thing whether you call brigal or you call by some other innovation and today we have seen in the talk also what isro is doing not just chandrayaan alone but several fishermen also getting benefit what else there that is a typical example the vaccination what our uh, another speaker told about our uh, is much cheaper and could address to many uh, uh, patient that's a good innovation itself is an example of a uh, frugal innovation i can say so uh, what i look at is uh, as i again go back to my subject called the product design which i taught uh, in addition to my area of vibrations in mechanical engineering in product design again one thing i will tell is the value analysis value engineering i think many of you already using it in even in industry typically value is equal to function divided by cost the functionality versus the cost so the numerator functionality has to be increased qualitatively and the cost the denominator has to be reduced automatically numerator increases numerator denominator decreases the value will increase look at any product you will have some components which are very useful functionally but cost more or cost less you have to attack the ones which are very expense you and giving less functionality i will attack that one so as a researcher as you said i will try to attack those uh, components which are unnecessarily costly i can i replace with another which is cheaper and so automatically the value increases which is typically what is the frugal innovation is about now as uh, iit faculty or a director or any other institution or r and d or any industry which i see here the duty is we should focus on how to apply in our day to day thing this technology as you said innovation to the public several ways to do whatever opportunity is given to us since i am in kerala now i am looking at the facilities in around for example lot of uh, coconut trees and palm trees etc i will try to use the coir technology is already going there in a great, great level similarly i have lot of water resources in kerala so i am we are trying to develop some hydro technologies cheaper versions kerala government already approached us in palghat in particular we have lot of 
uh, what you call wind energy because of the western gods are laid out in such a way you get fantastic uh, wind all through and solar also very good so these things so we started one uh, uh, center for excellence what is called uh, core center of renewable energy hydrogen as well as this uh, uh, solar wind and so on so look at your uh, uh, surroundings rather resources or whatever available around you and you can always innovate on it i'll conclude with one more thing we found is the uh, attapadi very close to iit uh, is a tribal village they don't have a power they are wasting their milk product because they can't preserve and so what we as a group went along with the collector and we found how to help that we are now developing drone technology to carry their products to another place where they can sell and do that because that's also lively for them so look at you are also doing when you do the outreach there is an opportunity to get into innovation cheaper way helping the society so several other things we are doing at iit palgad i don't want to uh, brand that thing here but as any institution we can always do that iit madras has already developed affordable house uh, says for that gf rb rp models and so on several things are there i think i will leave it to the others i'm sorry i take a little more than the time thank, thank you professor chief professor dr vipin you you lead the you were the director till recently and now chief scientist at the national innovation college and you spoke about so when we spoke about totality and what you call demand driven innovation just talk to us about that uh, yeah thank you very much first of all i am thankful to pnit network for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my views uh, many time it happens that uh, the people maybe in the institutions or in the society do not want to live with the problems they try to address the problem and many time they used to uh, you know do some experimentation and use the local resources and because of that the frugality or affordability component is there many time it happens that uh, uh, some people when they saw those sort of technologies they are not the technology in fact uh, uh, they are the proof of concepts uh, but as professor mentioned that when it is blended with high science they can be the cutting edge technologies uh, you know let me give uh, you know one good example somewhere in latin america some people were you know boiling the leaves of a plant uh, and uh, you know the laborers in fact after uh, coming uh, you know um, uh, you know from from the work uh, and they were feeling relaxed in fact that one scientist just observed that what these guys are doing in fact might be it is having some effect so it is the responsibility of the technology institutions and the science institutions to find out what is the mechanism and what is the mode of action and the they found that the salicylic acid was the component which was giving that uh, anti inflammatory kind of uh, property but when somebody started using it uh, they found that it is it was causing ulcer in the stomach then they they treated with acetic acid then this acid and spray uh, you know salicylic acid is the aspirin in fact largest selling drug in the world actually can you see the trigger came from the common people in fact they might have done lots of experimentation in the laboratories of their lives but until unless it has not been blended with the modern science it has not reached to the masses this is not one large number of such examples are there we at national innovation foundation used to identify uh, you know such innovations from the people we blend it with high science and try to take to the masses and because of that large number of technology have reached uh, even the start up of the year in amazon kandol here was the person in fact who was drop out incubated by us there are many example like in uh, malaysian you know who got the padma award that padman was our story so how those people have reached to the masses uh, you know it is because the science was blended with that but it is no defect uh, uh, you know let me mention that whether it is going to the masses or it is limit giving to the limited uh, you know places we have to address both the issues in fact if in assam in bhima ji the iron contamination is with in in the water and we see that okay market is not there then who will work on those technology so it is the responsibility of uh, the institutions it is the responsibility of innovator to develop the technologies might be for the niche areas so it is not for the localized or for the for, for the masses innovations are the innovations in fact uh, and uh, uh, 
you know if they are good in nature probably if it is not you know helping in generating much money but definitely it is helping to the to the human human kind smartphone haptic watch for uh, visually challenged and you spoke to me about you developing a braille uh, kit mma for again visually challenged uh, you know in addition to your opening remarks i'm just curious as to why did you choose this particular let's say segment for innovation your work of sensors and semiconductors would have opened it up to a larger or many more segments so do you start with a segment or do you start with innovation and how does this that when i talk of uh, frugal innovation uh, i'm not limiting my discussions or my thoughts only to those which have been developed at the grassroots level and which perhaps may not have that high degree or high intensity of r&d rather it's including those innovations which have been carried out in organizations for example isro or in companies but which have been developed under resource constraint settings but they have a certain level of uh, uh, the, uh, the scientific foundation and that that gives them the ability to be scaled and to be used for larger purposes and i'll elaborate on that a little bit more so based on this uh, there are three points i would like to highlight in these opening remarks one is the context of frugal innovation is the indian context of fr- fr- frugal innovation now frugality is considered such a to be a virtue in india and hence this socio economic context uh, provides a fertile ground for not only development of uh, frugal uh, products and services but also the adoption and also uh, the indian market is said to be very cost sensitive and this uh, underscores the need for companies uh, to innovate uh, so as to meet the customer requirements uh, now there are several enablers for uh, uh, frugal innovation in india there's sort of its advantages include the market structure advantage the cost advantage the uh, demand advantage that they have a large population in those population which is underserved but more critically that we have the advantage we have a technological advantage that is we have uh, a good infra- technological infrastructure and also a large population of trained manpower in form of students and this is specifically where iits and other educational institutes and r&d institutes in general could contribute to the story of frugal innovation in india and the second point i would like to bring is uh, the you know the solutions which are developed under this resource constraint settings are not limited to the resource constraint markets or societies and the examples which which we have seen earlier today whether it's by isro like how is helping people elsewhere and how countries across the world including developing developed countries are coming and utilizing the launch facilities of isro and similarly the affordable excellence of the medical uh, uh, sector in some some pockets have resulted in people coming to india for treatment resulting in what we call the medical tourism and similarly there are examples of uh, engineering uh, products which have been designed and developed in india which are finding market elsewhere just to give an example of the of the automotive and also the specific example would be the ECG, which was developed by GE. The point is, uh, when we talk of frugal innovation, is frugal, frugal innovation is not simply about lowering the cost to make it more affordable and accessible. It's also lowering the environmental footprint which comes in the process of making these products. Because at the end of the day, we have to also look into the sustainability of making these products. whatever we call is as resource abundant societies today will no longer be resource abundant in the years to come if we go along this not so what you call it uh, uh, utilizing this uh, wasteful practices in the process so these solutions these frugal solutions which have been developed in resource constraint settings have a place also in the developed world because even the developed world also have the goals towards this sustainable development this uh, SDGs sustainable development goals which have been set by the united nations and 
Hence, as was mentioned in the previous uh, panel, can we make in India and make for the world? And that is something where India has a big advantage. And that leads me to the third point. How do we further enhance and strengthen this ecosystem for frugal innovation? And specifically, how can IITs and expanding is further, how can R&D institutes and other institutes, institutes play a role in supporting this ecosystem? We already have some success stories. Now, how can we make it even better? There could several ways can we have a even further strengthening of the different uh, innovation networks, different groups coming together? Can we have a further strengthening of the industry academic collaboration? And more importantly, how can we enthuse our students? How can we facilitate our students? And how can we train our students to look into this, this uh, area of frugal innovation? So having said this, Swami, I'll come to the point which I've asked. Uh, very specifically, um, to come to a point, Samuel, uh, we have developed uh, a smartwatch and a watch for the visually impaired. And uh, again, it was developed in uh, IIT Kanpur. We have licensed to a company and is expected to uh, be launched uh, sometime in the beginning of next year. And again, uh, we looked into, and, and when we looked at the design, we right went to the very beginning that we had a student who was visually impaired at IIT Kanpur. And that was the starting point, trying to understand what the problems were. And then when we initially when we did the initial designs, we went to a school. There's a blind school in Kanpur and tested it on them, tried to understand what their problems were. And we incorporated all these things. And even we bought some of the existing solutions out there and compared our solutions with theirs and tried to figure out what, what are the best practices elsewhere and where the gaps were. I think this is one of the promises by which Eventually, it got a lot of uh, uh, you know, positive feedback from a larger section of the users, and eventually, uh, we'll be seeing a market launch someday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, coming to you, you were a scientist at ISRO, and ISRO is known globally for frugal innovation. And you decided to quit and set up a company which is doing innovation for agriculture. So just just talk about your opening thought, but also I want you to figure out why, what caused this shift from ISRO to the venture and other things. Yeah, thank you and uh, good, good afternoon everyone. And uh, I would like to con congratulate uh, the Pan IIT organizers to bring this important topic to ISRO's conference because when I was coming, what my personal experience is, very little about the uh, applications of the technology and uh, uh, a problem solving approach you know which can actually bring uh, a lot of other solutions like uh, professor was talking about uh, uh, blind person to come to iit for education so that you know even iit could, could you know understand the problem and then solve for it imagine if we have a very dedicated approach towards solving those problems and you know going to the society going to the segment and finding out the problems and then uh, technology is trivial. Uh, imagine uh, so I was working in uh, uh, on a mission which was going to go on Mars and all of a sudden it was uh, they started to call us with visual impairments. So what I felt was we uh, all my efforts were rewarded for a matter of second. But yes uh, I wanted to see the changes, what are the efforts we are putting to see the changes and what is right. And uh, As a, because uh, as it was also mentioned, frugality is in our genes. As an Indian, it is there in our genes. Whatever we do in our lives, the way we are running our businesses, it's all frugal ways. You know, frugal, uh, you know subconsciously we are doing that. Uh, <coughs> so when we started working on the problems, and, uh, and my own engineering, my project was, my major project was to make an ornithopter. It is a uh, aircraft which flies like a bird. 
So it was all, you know, just wanted to do it. But what is the application? The last slide we had a small slide. Okay, it can be used as a test and all those things. But you know, what I was first was like all my four years engineering, and you know, uh, if I had a real problem, and during my masters, uh, after I was introduced to this beautiful uh, philosophy of design thinking, and you know, how do you solve problem solving approach? So we worked on uh, cotton buds, designing a solution with which we can furnish to cotton. Solve somebody's problem, and uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm always so thrilled to you know share this story. The the biggest revenue which comes from from for us is not from the high end uh, engineering uh, solutions, uh, expensive solutions. They come from very small uh, fruit harvesting devices, weeding devices, and uh, which could have been done many many years back. And uh, frankly, you know. We not even call uh, like to call ourselves as a technology company we believe we are a product design company and we are okay with that and i think you know that we need much more bigger stories in uh, product design approach rather than technology led approach and that is what uh, uh, i mean uh, some of the examples i can give you which is actually you know uh, which we might not uh, actually be able to connect directly the sachets you see this is one uh, frugal innovation which was done by one entrepreneur in tamil nadu he wanted to sell shampoos and even before that uh, the tea sachets which you see this is all a uh, frugal innovation which was done by company and why because our consumer we have i mean even if i talk about the business point of view we have a huge market lying if you cross that you know the top 10% of the higher income groups you go down 90% and you see imagine the market So the shampoo companies, I mean, almost 40 to 50 percent of their sale is coming from sachets. So imagine, you know, the kind of innovation which has gone and you know it is giving the uh, returns. But uh, as I said, it is highly underrated. We don't see that, you know, you know, in our uh, regular uh, meetings or in the conferences. And it is very good that even this topic has been brought up. Very useful. Dr. Vipin, if I may come to you, uh, you know, this again coming back to this topic of frugal innovation for the masses. when people think about innovation do they start with the segment saying i'm going to innovate for the masses then think of innovation or do they start with innovation and then say i need to be frugal or i have resources where does this cycle start it has to start somewhere and then you kind of get sharper right see when the starting point is identification of the problem so sometimes somewhere the people struggle with something and they try to address that particular thing so that problem statement is the first statement uh, first step of innovation many time people do have the resources and they try to do the proper experimentation like uh, we used to do in the laboratories sometimes they do not have the resources then they they try to find out the you know the ways from here and there and it is not that the people at grassroots used to do in lab also the same struggle is there you know if you see that uh, the mars mission uh, you know the what uh, investment nasa has done if that is the budget government will never approve so we have to find our in fact uh, uh, our own ways and do lots of innovations to achieve that the target in one third post of nasa in uh, you know we have achieved that mission but i have a question for you uh, on the yeah. same point if we had that budget would we have been as innovative or would we have wasted You said we had one third of the budget, and therefore still we gave and we clap for ourselves. This is great. Let's say we did indeed have NASA's budget. Would we have been more innovative? No, it is not there. In fact, sometime uh, you know the you know the necessities uh, uh, you know the, the the mother of innovation or mother of invention and also the mother of innovation. So the resources are secondary actually. Resources are secondary, and when the resource constraint is there. then probably either we live or we become more innovative but whether it is more budget or less budget in fact it is our dedication commitment intelligence planning execution everything in fact uh, you know contribute equally uh, professor uh, if i may come to you you uh, because we've been talking about demand driven innovation and application oriented you are also a scientist so there is a space for pure science which starts with innovation for itself then figures out a demand right how does that coexist with this notion of almost applied science applied innovation which only starts with a demand it 
is something like a chicken egg and fraud sometimes yes sometimes some companies develop force the customer to use it it can be other way right you will go to the need analysis and do that in ways i develop some technology and i will uh, do it on my own as you said without bothering about the market but finally it comes to that okay it's a very good innovation and this can be applied so somebody else take this technology this uh, scientific knowledge whatever you say and then they will apply it somewhere else in a innovative way that's what always the product designs will go with two ways right i will uh, develop already a company i am very strong so i will develop in novel way and ask the users come on you use it this is better cheaper other way is as i said you start from scratch do the need analysis define it come to the solution either way possible Most as right. a scientist that's why in industry in institution we don't encourage only this obviously there are pure scientists pure mathematicians we have to acknowledge them encourage them and one fine morning the algorithm that is developed by x professor always can be used in some other way there are persons to use it you can't discourage them also always talk only product product we will develop the technology new knowledge so you can at least both coexist thomas you still wonder if deeper on your choice of the visually challenged right i mean it came about because you had somebody in your department who had that challenge and if for some reason that person is not there would you have looked at innovation some other space completely is there a lot of serendipity involved in all the innovations reaching a certain market reality ways sometimes what we do is we also show a certain capability this is what we can do and then we go to different fora and say this is a problem which we think we are going to get done that way and what has happened is that we have had feedback from companies look i think you can get it done provided you just change your trajectory and would you be willing to do that and we have done that and that also has led to some very successful uh, uh, executions of projects I mean, it goes both ways. Sometimes we take it all the way. Sometimes it comes comes from there. Sometimes we start somewhere midway. Right. I just add yeah. that uh, we just started in Palghat. I'm sorry, I'm referring to Palghat again. Uh, we have just started uh, two months sabbatical leave, like uh, to the faculty. In uh, during the summer break, they can go to industry only, just like uh, sabbatical going to other universities. But they will go only to industry. Then I will give you two months leave to explore. the problems which can be as you said uh, can be both ways and etc and then they come back do the collaboration take projects like that that's what we just started thank you uh, last question to you listen before we get to the audience uh, i want to talk about this controversial word called jugaad right which we think is a great thing i know many of you feel it's not so great what's your view on jugaad is that innovation is that total innovation uh, i mean there is lot of gray area like as we were discussing uh, jugaad uh, by scale by you know masses yeah it has to be scaled up so 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 juga might be good for a particular situation in a local community in a local area it can be translated into a total innovation by new technology but we should not be actually you know encouraging or uh, people 
if you don't agree with you they'll find you at lunch time i'm sure uh, so uh, maybe we have 5 minutes for questions 5 minutes okay we have one question one question Budget. don't make it too long My question to IIT Kanpur Siddhartha: You are telling that you are developing some sensors for chemical engineering uh, as a part of your uh, conversation. I came to know. I just want to know now. AI has been made as a core subject in all fields of engineering, and already I had initiated when I was a professor in Bombay to set up the AI lab for all fields. So, do you have any development on the chemical engineering sensors which can be deployed in the AI for lab setup? which will give innovation to the students that is my question to you because uh, we have now set up an ai lab which is common to all folds of in college of engineering and now i moved from bombay to chennai so do you have any innovative sensors that you have developed uh, for chemical engineering which can be used in the ai lab which will give innovation to the students where more uh, result oriented things can come out uh, we oh, have my question is clear Yes, we have developed the sensors, and let me take a very specific example of gas sensors. And uh, we are also adding smartness to the sensors by adding algorithms. But this is something which, uh, in a few months, we'll be deploying it for field trials because that has to go through the techn technological validation, and then that will be uh, we, are we are jointly developing the company. So we expect that if that succeeds, I'll take it up. Once we have a successful deployment, and once all the sensitive issues associated with technology transfer are done then we will think of uh, utilizing that learning in the classes great i am told we are out of time uh, thank you gentlemen for a wonderful discussion